In the last couple of weeks, Spurs have been the talk of the town. Nagelsmann, Pochettino, Conte is gone. They are looking for a new manager. They have kind of gone interim into the end of the season. Last week, we tested out a Nagelsmann tactic credit with a legend that is Josh Daly, which gave me an extra week to perfect a Pochettino overachieving tactic. And that's exactly what I'm going to bring on you guys today. I've got this very quick sim that I will show you with Spurs before doing Espanyol, Southampton and PSG to show you what it can do at a top team and two teams that are lower down in their current leagues. Let's get right into it. What's going on there guys? Kempi here and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Poch Tactic. This has been much requested over the last couple of weeks where Nagelsmann is obviously now a big favourite for Spurs. But Pochettino is still an option and he could still be going back to Tottenham Hotspur. So we have made a tactic from scratch where we are hopefully going to show you guys the demon tactic that I've created for Pochettino. It's an overachieving tactic. So if you're a mid-table, lower half club, this tactic could be fantastic for you. Talk about mid-table clubs. So we've got Tottenham Hotspur, the first one I have done. We've won a trophy of them, so we broke the curse first season. Winners of the FA Cup, which is fantastic to see. And a top three finish in the Premier League as well in the FA Cup. It was a penalty win against Liverpool, which is good to see. 1-1 uh, XG, fairly similar to Burns. They had three, we had 2.81. Uh, 16 shots there, 23. Quite a close game. Liverpool obviously a very, very strong side. And I believe they ran away. No, they didn't. City ran away with the league this year, but they were definitely the second best team. City losing one game all season. So a very, very tough season to win this one. But with Spurs, a 2.11 goals per game, 1.08 goals per game as well. And in terms of the goals, we will just show you very quickly what we are you looking at. 23 goals from Hyung Son, 17 from Perisic, only 12 from Kane because Kane had a massive injury playing just 20 three games hence why Perisic looks so good because he was playing left wing while Saul's playing up front so it's been a little bit of a difficult season here for Spurs but still a good finish imagine what this would have done with a prime Harry Kane in that deep line forward role let me show you guys what this tactic does with Espanyol, Southampton and PSG before I come back to Spurs and show you guys how this tactic works in game. Just a very, very quick one. If you guys are brand new to the channel, if you can, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, get them bell notifications on and subscribe on all these things as well. Slash follow. So Twitch, Twitter, TikTok, subscribe on YouTube. All of that helps me out massively. It helps you guys out because you get to keep a track on all of the wonderful things in the world of Kempi. In terms of content creation as well, we're on a massive, massive grind at the moment and I'm absolutely loving it. I'm loving the Twitch. I'm loving the YouTube. So come over and support it. It helps me out massively. In terms of the first thing we've done, Espanyol. Espanyol predicted to come 12th in the division. A very good start in terms of training facilities and youth facilities and a decent start in 11, but not the greatest of squads. And you can see we've come third in the league. A very, very good result. We beat Valencia by three points. We were six points clear of that Europa League uh, positions. Six points clear of Athletic Club Madrid. And a massive difference to where we are compared to Sevilla. And we had a very good season. A 39 goal difference, 22 goals, nine draws, seven losses. The seven losses, we did lose both to Real Madrid and Barcelona. So not some bad results there at all. In terms of the data hub, 2.16 goals per game, 1.13 conceded. They're very, very similar to what we were looking at with Tottenham Hotspur. And in terms of the goals, you're looking at Jose Carlos Lazo doing very well. 39 appearances, 18 goals, 14 assists. Hotsalu, our main striker, just 27 games, 18 goals, 2 assists. Rampfweight as well, 42 games, 15 goals, 13 assists. Uh, Cesar Montes at the back got 15 goals, which is absolutely wild. Javi Puedo, 9 goals, 6 assists. Uh, Dennis Suarez, the key man in this side, 8 goals, 11 assists. Assists coming from pretty much everywhere in this team, even Brian Olivan in that left back role. 13 assists from him and 8 from Alex Vidal from right back as well. So the wing backs are going to be key in this formation. So make sure you've got good wing backs, good wingers and a decent striker that can hold up the play. And Southampton, we've done quite well as well. Obviously Southampton in real life are sitting, I believe, still bottom of the league as I record this on Sunday. Um, we've managed to absolutely smash it. 53 points, a positive goal difference. Not doing very well in the Cups at all, which is okay. I'm not too fussed about that. But the left wing, Miroslav Orsic, absolutely smashed it for us. 19 goals in 5 assists in 40 appearances. Che Adams doing very well as well. And from there, the quality of the Southampton team simply dropped off. But War Prowse getting 15 assists is very good to see. And we made them much more solid because in just 1.37 goals per game, scoring 1.47. And as a team that, like, like I said, right now is sitting bottom of the league, predicted to come 17th on FM. Steering them to a mid-table finish is very good to see. And just seven and just three points actually outside qualifying for Europe and seven point uh seven points yeah of getting into the Europa League so 
a very good season for Southampton. I think Southampton fans would 100% take these results if I gave it to them right now. So very good from Southampton. And to show you what this tactic could do with a team that could absolutely dominate a league, you've got PSG winning the French treble as per usual. The Champions League, I can never win with PSG. Round of 16 by Real Madrid, but a very good season, 105 goal difference, just two losses to Nantes and uh, Lyon, two draws as well, but 105 goal difference, 104 points, the Trophy Champs, the Coupe de France, what more do you want? And in terms of goals as well, it is so well shared out between this side. The front four have all got above 20 goals. Mbappe with 33 goals, 13 assists. Neymar with 24 goals, 22 assists. Messi with 22 goals, 24 assists. And Carlos Soler with 21 goals and 10 assists. You've got Fabian getting 12 assists and 9 goals. You've got Renato Sanchez getting 11 assists from that centre mid row as well. Luna Mendes with 9 assists. Hakimi with 7 assists again, showing how could key the wing backs are. Marquinhos as well. Fantastic with his head, 20 goals, and it's absolutely nailed it. In terms of the data hub, you're looking at 3.39 goals per game. 3.4 goals a game is fantastic, and that's exactly what we'll be seeing, and just 0.63 conceded per game. If we go in-depth into the squad statistics on the league on Uber Eats, to look at the team overview, most goals, fewest shots against, fewest goals conceded, and possession-wise, we were joint top with Lyon and Marseille on 59%. There's some very, very good results there. I want to show you guys how this tactic works with Tottenham, so give me just two seconds, I'll that save and I'll show you this tactic with a wonderful Tottenham Hotspur. And here we are then, it's a 4-2-3-1 high press positive mentality. We're going to go through each individual position because there is added instructions on each individual player and some very good ones at that as well. One thing I want to say straight away, if you want this to be more overpowered and less like Mauricio Pochettino, change Harry Kane from a deep line forward to an advanced forward and he'll score you a lot of goals. But obviously we're making this as a Pochettino tactic, so that's why Mbappe may have only got 33 goals. Kane might have only got 20. Hosselu the same. If you want to score more goals, just change it to an advanced forward on attack. You'll get more goals. But if you're trying to play like Poch, I think this is a very good tactic for that. You've got a sweeper keeper on defend in goal with tackle harder. A wing back on attack at the right back position. You're looking at the Carl Walker, the Trippier role. Stay wider, tackle harder. Two ball players on defend, dribble more, tackle harder. A wing back on support on the left, just sitting that a little bit deeper like Ben Davies. Stay wider, tackle harder, but not quite bombing up as much as Pedro Poro. The ball with the midfielder on defend as well. No further instructions. The Victor Juan Yama role. What's a player and what a position that is. Box to box midfielder on support next to him. He's going to be bombing on. And guess who that is? It's Musa Dembele. Cross less often. Dribble more with the ball. Run wide with the ball and get further forward. I loved Musa Dembele in his prime. And I know every single Spurs fan and anyone who loved football did as well. So he is in that role. Obviously this time it's Yves Basuma. Slightly different. An absolute goal scoring machine. Young Wins on the left. Sit narrow a tackle harder. Inside forward on attack. An inverted winger on support on the right. Now this I've sort of done as an Ericsson role when he was at Spurs. It would be easy to do that as an advanced playmaker on attack or support, but I find the results weren't quite as good. So I went to the inverted winger, and I've sort of made it a playmaker anyway. More direct passing, taking more risks with passing, cross more often, shoot less often, sit narrower, and tackle harder. So I think that is pretty much a playmaker on the wing without it being called a playmaker. The Deli Alley, the goal scorer, the shadow striker, cross less often, roam from position, close down less, and tackle harder. And the deep lying forward on attack, up there as more direct passes. You know Kane can swing them unbelievable balls in. We've seen it so many times over him over the years and we saw it at Poch as well. Dribble less, shoot more often, roam for position and tackle harder. That is the player instructions done. I think you'll agree they're absolutely fantastic. We'll go through the team ones now. So the team instructions are set to a positive mentality. Shorter passing, pass into space, play out of defense, low crosses, run at the defense, be more expressive and a slightly higher tempo in transition we're rolling it out distributing quickly countering and counter pressing and out of, possession, out of possession it's a high press system a standard defensive line getting stuck in and prevent the short goal distribution and press as much as you can that is the way that is the pochettino way and that is how we've built this spurs side i think you guys would agree it's quite a good recreation of the spurs tactic as I've said, if you do want to make it a little bit more overpowered, just make that advance forward. Maybe make that the same as Son. If you want basically a 4 2 3 1, which is ridiculous overpowered, do them things. But if you're trying to stay like Poch, I think this is a very good tactic to build your team around and build the Poch 
style of play. Thank you guys for watching as usual. It's been a pleasure making this tactic and making this video for you. There'll be a rebuild out on Wednesday with a team not from this lift. So keep your eyes peeled. The only club I'll give you is from Italy. So it's an exciting one. Come back on Wednesday to see that. Thank you for watching and I'll speak to you next time.